All right, so I wanna move on um, and just show you this table. This is a table from your book um, that shows you some of the chemicals that mediate vasoconstriction and vasodilation. So on this page, we have the chemicals that mediate vasoconstriction. And you can see that some of these are molecules that are familiar to us, right? So we have the neurotransmitters, norepinephrine, serotonin. Um, you can also have paracrines. Uh, mediating vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Um, you can also have hormones such as vasopressin, angiotensin II, which you will be learning more about when we uh, cover the kidneys. Um, those also have an effect on vasoconstriction and vasodilation, or they, they cause vasoconstriction. Moving on to vasodilation, kind of same idea, right? We have a variety of molecules that um, can mediate vasodilation. Some of them are neurotransmitters, some are paracrines, some are hormones. Um, and looking at their names, you can see that a lot of them are familiar to you. Okay. Um, I also want to make the point that uh, arterial diameter can be uh, controlled locally or it can be controlled from far away. So it can be part of a local control loop or a reflex control loop, right? So paracrines are going to mediate local changes in arteriolar diameter, whereas things like hormones or the nervous system are going to have a more um, global effect and they're going to be controlled from farther away from the central nervous system or from the endocrine system. Okay, I just want to close by giving you a couple examples of, hor of sorry, of molecules mediating, mediating changes in arteriolar diameter, starting with this example here. Um, so in this example, we're looking at paracrines that are changing um, the diameter. Um, so if we just kind of look at this flow chart here, you can see that if our tissue metabolism increases, that's going to increase the release of certain paracrines, okay, that are going to cause the arterioles to dilate. Um, as a result, you have a decrease in resistance and an increase in blood flow. And then when you have an increase in blood flow, that then is going to bring in more oxygen and nutrients into that tissue that's metabolizing a lot, okay? Um, so this actually is the exact same uh, reflex, sorry, local, it's negative feedback. It's a local negative feedback control loop that we saw on our very first um, set of lectures, okay? Um, and this is a mechanism that's used by the tissues to regulate their own blood supply, right? So when metabolism goes up, you have those signals going in to, um, to dilate your blood vessels. Okay, second example is sympathetic reflexes. So sympathetic nervous system can control arteriolar diameter as well, okay? Um, when we, so we always have a baseline level of sympathetic activation, and that's shown right here. We have our sympathetic neuron firing at a certain rate, telling our blood vessel to be constricted a certain amount, a certain baseline amount, okay? If we increase our sympathetic activation, we're going to decrease our arteriolar diameter and increase its resistance. If we uh, decrease our sympathetic activation, we can dilate our blood vessel, okay? So there's like less of a signal telling this blood vessel to constrict, okay? Um, I also just want to make this point again that this is an example for this particular blood vessel. So some blood vessels will dilate or dilate in response to sympathetic activation while other uh, blood vessels will constrict in response to sympathetic activation. So the response is going to depend on your receptor type and the uh, signal transduction pathway that you have going on inside of that, of those target cells. 